Making the form look natural is one of the biggest challenge that visual artists have faced. The reason is because we are creatures of this world. We are another form among many forms. And for us to create form has to take so many years to control the paint, the colors. When I paint, I want to grasp the movement, the growth, the order of the elements. Create the sense of volume, the sense of, of growth, the path it took to develop. For me to see form moving doesn't have to be a living object. It could be a rock. A rock can represent how it developed through the way it's formed. Even the wind, animals, plants, all these elements that exist have a coherent form, a developmental process. And that's what I want to hold on to in my art. Even our imagination has a certain form in order to make sense, in order to complete it. To start, I prepare the canvas already with the feeling I want to create, with that sense of flow, even if it's in an abstract sense because I have no color, I'm just preparing the surface. I think about it like sediments. This is gonna be underneath to be discovered maybe later, but now I'm gonna be covering it. It's just a nice base to work on. I develop the drawing in a separate form outside of the canvas so that I can control the, the kind of like the path of where my colors and my values and all these forms are going to be living into. So I separated those two and composed the drawing in different ways until I was happy with it. Then I got this drawing and on the back side I put oil paint with a lot of mineral spirits. When I transfer all these lines will be transferred onto my surface, my canvas that I'll be working on. The flesh, I decided to go and put the Verdasho. I experiment this with a Renaissance technique by reading Chenino Chenini, cool underpainting of the flesh that has the sense of form, of light, values. It's just a color that is waiting to be dried and combined with warmer touches over this. As I develop it, I keep that green in our flesh. We look at images and we think we are orangey. Flesh in general is pretty gray, it has high chromas where the light is hitting it, but it has all these cools too. They don't come out in digital reproduction because those are dead reproductions that have no idea about form and about this stuff that I'm talking about. Nature is made of movement. We are forms mixing into each other through all these waves and vibrations. After the environment is looking good, I go and I want to finish with the flesh. So now I'm preparing, oiling in. All this has been sunken in because it has been drying. And I want to bring it back to the freshness, to the saturation, to paint over it. So this is a little bit of turpentine and linseed oil. I just put it over the surfaces that I'll be painting. To paint the skin colors, I have selected all these colors to play with. So I put two yellows, burnt sienna, canyon red, alicerin crimson, terra verde. This is manganese blue, viridian green, raw umber, ultramarine blue, Indian red, and ivory black. Since this is the last layer, I'm just using linseed oil, cold press, and that will be my medium. I'm using a red sable natural hair brush from Seki. I'm playing here with some of the flesh colors that I'll be using. So I'll put throughout the palette some of the colors, the harmonies that I think I'll be using for the flesh. So it's kind of like a rehearsal almost. I like to practice like that here and think of colors where I'm gonna put the greens, a little bit of blue, how cold do I want it. Since I have a lot of greens around the head, in the forest and the background and blues, I want to have also those notes to be able to echo the environment. People say we are what we eat, but we also are the colors in our environment. I'll put some darks here that will be compatible with the hair of my model. And I want to have some varieties for that as well. So I'll put some cool colors and some warms. And I'm losing intensity here. So I'm gonna clean my brush. Here I'm not using white. I'm just using these pure colors to mix.
come into the hair and from there transition into the shadow here underneath on the side of the neck. In the neck shapes what I'm painting. I'm pointing towards the tension point, which is the connection between her and what she's looking at, which is a mystery. And even the neck has to kind of look and point and have that conversation with the subject. The side of the face has expression too, because everything is pointing. Even I can take advantage of this mark and point also at that. All these thoughts add volume. I think I want to cut the shoulder a little bit down. I want to bring it a little bit lower here. bring some lights out, I can play around and take some of those lights back. That gives a different texture to the painting. I've been able to combine my thoughts, my ideas, with the outside world as reference for those forms. Now, I can just follow my thoughts navigating on this surface because I want to give this area a specific feeling of dreams. Black and white has this weird, unnatural feeling. I want to play with that space and compose something and see what comes out but I need to have some new paints and new methods. First, I got a charcoal, big charcoal stick, and walked through the space marking. I just put a couple of charcoal marks, and then after that, I got paint and started going with a big brush. I want my creativity to go wild and see how many things I can invent with this kind of performance art almost. When I dream, it happens in a night, even though a lot can happen in a dream. Time is still arguable, we still don't know if it exists exactly and how it relates to us. The mystery of night show us that. I want to give myself less than 10 days to complete this mural. With a loose gesture, my whole body was drawing as I walked through the space up and down the stairs. I got three types of gray, a darker gray, a light gray, and a middle tone that will be living permanently in this space. This dried pretty fast and I couldn't blend and do my form. So I'm gonna get my oil paints and paint on top of this acrylic and develop the forms a little bit further. I just got white and black. They're gonna be different hues because the acrylic I bought from the paint store has a little bit of the bluish tone to this. So when I mix my oils, it's probably gonna be warmer towards the purpley side. I like the combination of hues. If I do work throughout the whole area, it will be nice and balanced. I'm pretty happy with the results. I don't know what Carl Jung would say about my deepest shadows. Even dreams have to have good forms in order to influence us.